All right, what's going on? Welcome to uh, Judoka Talk with uh, your host, John Jane. Today we got Jesse Butler and Shadi Alnahas with us. And today we're going to talk about Teddy, Teddy Renner because uh, something, just shock, something quite shocking happened um, the other day. Yeah, it did. He lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, just, uh, just getting ready to share a screen here. Wait, hold on. At first, when because uh, Geronimo was the one that sent us the link uh, in the group chat, nobody thought it was true because when we clicked on it, it wouldn't give us any details. Remember? I remember. I just read the title. The title this morning was like Teddy lost by error, like error of the referee or something. I didn't even watch the fight yet. So. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. yeah. I saw it. They, they really exaggerated it, too. They said it was because of uh, really bad refereeing or something like that. What was it? I don't know. The, the article said it was due to, um, like, something like really, really bad refereeing. I can't remember the word. Yeah, we can. I'll find up. The, I think they actually have um, Teddy's interview after the match um, in French. So, Shadi, if you want to translate for us exactly. afterwards. It's about a minute and a half, but yeah, just to uh, show you, just turn up the volume so you can hear the crowd, like here. But yeah, just turn the volume down. But yeah, so even during the pandemic, the crowds are huge. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, damn. Yeah. Also, how's the, regular how's the video grand. quality for you guys over there? It's pretty fun. Yeah, I can understand what's going on. They're fighting. All right. <laughs> and Joseph used so Joseph used to be under hundreds just a couple years ago. Yeah. Really bigger now. Yeah. Really? When you did Randori of him, was he plus or was he minus back? I think he was starting to move up. Like but he was like a heavy minus. Yeah, he was um pretty thick when I fought him, I remember. Yeah. But I'm also was a pretty small hundreds. I still am a pretty small hundred. John, you said you beat this guy before? Yeah, I did. I beat him with um, in 2018 at the Saarbrücken European Cup. That was really fast. Um, yeah, that was a quick penalty. Um, only in like 50, well, 50 seconds in and there wasn't a single attack. So, yeah, you kind of have to give a penalty for that. And... Yeah, I beat this guy for him for a Wazari... And that was it. Was that was for five minutes? That was it. Do you have that match on recording? We... Um, no. But what I the way I threw him was you see how he's um a right. He he's like a right leg lead. Yeah. Pretty much off the grip, did a kata groom on his lead arm, and that's how I got the score. Nice. What a beast. So Shadi, if you were fighting Teddy, what was your, what would your tactics be? Like. Uh, in my head, if somebody fights me like this, I think I have an Ogoshi opening, but at the same time, it's steady. Yeah. And, like, I don't know if it's smart to, like, hug somebody this big and massive. But, honestly, no. I'll just, like, I literally just would have to run circles around him until he's, like, tired. Yeah. I don't know. I think you just have to, like, keep moving, moving until, like, he tries, like, gets frustrated and tries a bad attack and, like, gets countered, like, in, like the Japanese guy did. Also, did you just see there that he got um, that Teddy got a penalty? Yeah, that was like I, like he was controlling this like the the. Yeah, he got a he got a step out penalty. Yeah, no, but he was controlling the kumikata. For, like, but he stepped out with both feet yeah. while controlling the kumikata. So I don't think he was like super into this. He was just like having fun, I guess. Yeah, but he's still fighting in front of a huge crowd. Which... And he lost, so we're making a video about it. Yeah, <laughs> and this is his first. I think this is his first loss to a French player since like yeah, long time. Oh, two thousand and seven. Honestly, like as a ref right now, I don't know who I'd give a penalty for because like he's pushing, but at the same time Teddy's not doing much right now. Yeah, and then Teddy there did a false attack. Yeah, if they give this, no, no, 
Like, yeah, I was that, like, that would be a little harsh to give a penalty on immediate false attack. Know, like superstars like that in judo, usually like the rusts are super lenient with them. So I'm surprised yeah. you already got two. Especially but, in like in France, you know. Yeah. But I think um, Joseph actually here did some pretty good tactics because he's usually, I think, right-handed, and you can see how he's leading with the right leg. But when he does fight, he actually kind of grabs up in Teddy's ar um, armpit to hold that big arm over the top and fights almost left-handed. Yeah. Well, Teddy's shooter now is very slow-paced for, like, recently. Yeah. Hold up. Yep. That was oh, it. Uh, Wait, let's uh, hear the crowd. Yeah, that was that was not. That was that was really quick. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a pretty um No, I don't think I don't think the last one the last one was like it's not a way to like end the fight, you know? Yeah, but especially especially it's Teddy Rene, you know. Yeah. Also there you can see sort of the crowd with uh yeah. lacking social distancing, but <laughs> That title is like crushing Teddy. Teddy Renner loses again. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty like harsh for a guy who hasn't lost in ten years. Yeah, but I'm calling it from now. He's gonna come back, the scariest man on earth. Yeah, let's um. I think this looks like his interview. Can you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Les jeunes, qu'est-ce que je vais leur dire, moi? Ils sont dégoûtés. Je suis le soi-disant grand frère, 31 ans. Je dois montrer l'exemple. Je monte l'exemple, je pose mon judo, j'essaye. C'est moi qui suis pénalisé. Il faut arrêter. Encore le premier shido où c'est tous les deux, il n'y a pas de problème. Là, ça marche. Mais t'es arbitre, tu sais que t'as déjà fait une petite erreur et tu continues ton... Bon, je suis d'accord. Vous avez l'impression qu'on va se payer Teddy Riner pour payer Teddy Riner Moi, je sais pas si c'était Teddy Riner ou Paris Saint-Germain, mais bon, ils ont réussi. Je vous parle pas parce que je suis en interview. Sinon, on vous aurait dit de parler. Donc là, c'est l'injustice que je ressens. Et si on va dans, dans, la, dans le règlement et l'arbitrage, excusez-moi, il y a une grosse erreur d'arbitrage. Et qui coûte, qui coûte un tour au Paris Saint-Germain. Ou encore... C'est pas très grave, c'est les gens qui ont transparent équipe, je vais m'en remettre. Mais les jeunes qui comptaient fêter, grandir ensemble, ça, se faire une petite aventure et écrire une petite une page de leur histoire, ben là c'est raté. Donc c'est dommage. Ça m'embête pour eux. Et pourtant les ambitieux étaient élevés euh, avec le, le Paris Là oui, on voulait être en finale, on voulait euh, aller chercher ben, cette équipe, on voulait aller en demi-finale, on voulait être sur la boîte. C'est dommage, c'est vraiment dommage. Surtout d'aller euh, voir les jeunes et voir comment ils le prennent. C'est... C'est dégoûtant quand ça se passe comme ça. He's basically saying it's really disgusting how it happened. He's like, I'm disgusted. Like the ref gave us shitos at first for both of us, but then like he knew he made a mistake, but he kept doing it. Uh, he like screwed. Well, he didn't say screwed, but he said like he made PSG like his team lose a whole like a round, and they wanted to make the semis and even go to the finals and win it. This is disgusting. Like. The young ones are like watching, they're gonna be disappointed, everybody's disappointed. Uh he like he's like there's definitely a mistake with the refereeing. I'm disgusted, I'm disgusted. I'm like like wow. I don't think I don't think that's the way to like that's, it's Teddy It's Teddy Renee. You can't just give him Shiro's like like this quick. I mean you can't, but also he for the entire you know, four minutes of that three minutes of that match. Like, literally nothing happened other than one false attack. Yeah, but... The, I don't like, want to be harsh. It is heavyweight judo. But nobody attacked, right? Yeah. And Teddy, Teddy and the last judo had control. Well, had the grip control, right? He was like, I tried... Like, he's like, he was saying, I tried to grab and, like, control the kumikata, but... 
you would get penalized for that. So it's like, Jesse, what but it doesn't sound like an interview really. It sounds like somebody recorded it while he was like clashing out, you know? It's like, yeah, yeah. They, were, they were asking him questions. So it must have been you know, like an immediate post match interview. Yeah, I hate that. I hate when, like, as soon as you lose, like, imagine you lose step off the half. He's done too many times. It's like you're heartbroken you while talking, like, somebody brings a freaking recording thing, or it's like, how does it feel to lose one of the biggest tournaments of your life? Like, what are you expecting me to say? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of have to cut them some slack on them. Yeah, but they don't. They're brutal. Yeah, because usually it's not um, a great look to be, you know, blaming the referees. At least that's that's what I was taught. Um, 100%. On like, um, we, when, when I had a media day for the European Youth Olympics, they're like, all right, so you're representing Team GB. Don't, like, talk, you know, don't talk bad about the refereeing or the officials you know, only don't talk about the other, you know, people talk about your own performance and that's it. Yeah. But it is right after a match that you just lost. And Yeah, I, I feel the same way because I, I feel like I get screwed over a lot with referees as well. Um, and if, like at one point, there's nothing that's going to be able to change what happened during that last match. The only thing that I'm going to do or get out of being able to, uh, like, kind of cuss out the referees, I guess, in a sense, is just make myself feel better. It's not going to change anything, but, like, the only thing I could have changed in that moment was the way I played and fought. That's what I learned. And the more the more you, like, react to the referees, honestly, the more they want to, like, make you lose. It's so like, if you're, like, yeah. if you get a shoot on somebody, like, see people, like, like what the hell? Like, well, like that, the ref is just like, okay, next attack I'm going to give you mentally, the, like, I yeah. probably like, yeah. Actually, I, I often see like some people would just like bow to the referee when they get a, when the referee gives them a sheet. I, that, <laughs> that, that one I find funny is just like yeah. okay. uh, that's almost sarcastic. I feel, but do you guys think that a referee should have like judo experience as a fighter? Yes. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. I feel like if you haven't fought at that level before, I don't know. That's kind of tough though, because you're not gonna find a lot of past athletes who are going to want to be referees like that That's what I, was about to say. Well, I think yeah. i think the ijf has been trying to uh create us uh create a pathway yeah. um for um, athletes to go into refereeing give me a good paycheck and i'll do it yeah exactly 100%. But, and i mean you know being a referee you get to travel to all these places it's a it's yeah. a decent job, but I think you need to have a competed at a reasonably high level to be able to understand what's happening. And so, because it's when you're watching the replay, it's a little easier, but in that split second, you need to really understand the context of everything going on. Yeah, because a lot of times, like on Nuaza, even like when you're on the ground, you basically have the arm bar or something, or like you're hold, about to hold them down if the ref gives you like one more second. And then they're like, Mate, and you're like, I literally have him here. I think that's just, like, inexperience from the ref that, like, he doesn't know that you're about, literally about to get him. I had a fight. I had him in a triangle. And literally, I take, like, you know, when you, like, get the other, like, to, like, cause he was trying to stand up. I try to take the leg so he falls back in. As soon as I did, he falls, and I'm about to pin him. And he's there, like, Mate. And I was like, come on. And I end up losing that fight. So, like, yeah. when you rewatch that fight, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything because I don't, like, I lost. Yeah. But in my head, when I watched the fight, I was like, like, I had him, you know. Yeah, I think another thing, just like when you're fighting, you have to really try and, if you want to like make sure you win, you have to make sure it's not up to the referee to decide. Yeah. And I think Teddy went into that match with sort of the mindset that he could have just he can waltz around sort of and yeah, you know, like, he'll, he'll win because he's Teddy. Like he also said in the interview, he's like. Like, yeah, I know it's, like, it doesn't matter. It's, like, team tournament. But still, like, we would have liked to win. But I don't know. I feel, I feel like he would have fought very differently if it was, like, a bigger tournament. But he was just, he was just like, you know, like, I think it was just, like, feeling the process, like, nothing, you know? Yeah. It looked like at the end there he was trying, though, because he, he felt the pressure. of about Yeah, yeah. After, yeah after a second shoot, it was like, damn it, like, that was fast. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, he really, uh, he, he came out with the kind of, he didn't come out with a super aggressive attacking mentality. So it, it kind of, it allowed the referee to give him penalties. He didn't, 
you have to give the referee no reason to want to want you to lose because referees the referees I've talked to there as long as you're attacking and you're being positive and your your judo's in you know you're making the match interesting yeah then they'll want the match to keep going 100%. but if the match is boring referees tend to just want to end it because yeah, it's like he wants to watch that. I mean, it's like when two of the two Japanese got two silver medals instead of nobody. Got yeah, that was really funny, Jesse. I was gonna thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, and that goes back to the whole experience. That, you know what? What dictates a match that's boring, and what dictates a match that's tactical? If you have a referee that's out on the match that hasn't even stepped foot on a national level, how are they supposed to know that I'm, we're sitting there trying to get our grip and foot sweeping and stuff like that, as opposed to just not doing anything at all? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's that's definitely right. it's definitely a fine line where that comes with ref, referees having competition experience, but at a certain level, like there's so there's only so many tactics in like when, once it's just people, you know, going grip to grip and there's not a lot of, I mean, in that match, there was not that mo much movement in the gripping. Yeah. So like if, if it's an really active grip fight, um, I don't, I don't really see referees ever giving that penalties unless they give the, yeah, yeah. this penalty is, but that's usually the people are literally just slapping each other. John, next call, I can bring on a, a U.S. national ref and we can ask all these questions if you'd like. I've seen, I've seen uh, speaking of Halloween, because Halloween's coming up, I've seen uh, somebody dress as like a IGF ref, but with like like the blind man cane, like cane stick <laughs> and black sunglasses. There's like a shot of IGF, well, not IGF, Judah referees. Yeah. <laughs> funny, I found that really funny. That's tough because. I don't know the all the judo, judo referees I've talked to. They 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 legitimately are trying their best. Yeah, hundred percent. Like at the end of the day, they they can't please everybody, right? Like everybody yeah. that loses will have well, not everybody unless you get bombed on your back. They can't really say much. But uh, if it's a close fight, of course the losing side will have like more reason to be like, oh, I shouldn't, you know? Yeah. But that, again, just goes back to you got to fight in a way that doesn't let the referee decide the match. You have to yeah. – and although sometimes – because if you're if the match is really close and neither person's really doing that much, you're you kind of admitted that you're – And that's why, to really win. that's why I love the rule of – that there's changed. You know, when there was, like, by flags, you win by flags. Yeah. I hated that rule. Because, yeah. like, Teddy got screwed over in that one, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's how he lost his. Uh... Yeah, that's why I'm like, I love that now it's golden score because, like, it's whoever has more will will win it, unless a shooter happens. But, you know, it's a but, yeah, actually, I think the referees are instructed to uh, try and let it happen, like, let it be decided on a score. Yeah. More than, uh, which leads to some really long golden scores. But, yeah. Some of those are pretty interesting, and when someone throws someone, that's. But those are more fair. It's way more fair than yeah. like, than by winning by flags. I don't know. But do you think um do you think Teddy's going to be able to come back? Because his, his gonna... form in the last year and a half is. Not the best. It's like, not been great. He's been off for a while, but I don't know. My prediction is that this man is going to have the biggest comeback and he's going to be the scariest human on what makes you say that? I feel like I don't know I think like like I'll take me for example like I would always go like for a long time would go to quarterfinals blah blah every tournament and then like at some point like it just drains you and like you have no more energy right so I think those like two losses for Teddy is just gonna like re like <clears throat> sorry He's just going to pump him up to, like, have more fire, like, you know, and, like, he's going to come back and he's going to train like a maniac and thank God I'm not plus. That's all I can say. Have you ever done any randori with Teddy in the camps? No, I asked him once, but at the same time, like, I had to look at him like this. <laughs> like, he said yes, but, like, at the end he got, like, a bigger guy. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't know. I've seen Teddy at training camps, and he's usually kind of lazy, but he does. I like that's the thing. I think Teddy does that to feel out his opponents more than anything, yeah. and like he has a really good team. He has like the money. He has everything to like perform right. So I think he just like does it. He like pans his ass off on his own. You know, he doesn't like show yeah. it. But you say that, but. Um, after his loss in Paris, when he was at the Dusseldorf camp, I've never seen someone work so hard. Like the change was, yeah, yeah, 100%. like really noticeable. Because before, you know, at any time you saw Teddy in a camp, he was usually laying laying on the side of the mat. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in Dusseldorf, he was doing like two or three rounds in a row, and he was beating. Like he was really giving beating to some guys. I think he was doing randori with the two Uzbekistani guys you know the two giants and that was really funny because he would like throw him like drag him down and then Iliadis would come over pick the Uzbek cup and then throw him back at Teddy (laughs) and like that kept happening yeah yeah this is one of the funniest people I ever met on the circuit man he's such a hands-on coach as well yeah yeah. I I love just watching him like he does randori with his own guys on the side and it's more intense than like and he beats them up. <laughs> it's crazy how still he still got it, man. Like he's beating up on like Bobinov, who's like one of the best at nineties. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys think uh, Budapest is gonna happen end of the month? Ooh, I really don't. Have you seen the um, what the entry list for uh, Budapest? Uh, I didn't go on it. Um, let, let me bring that up. Yeah, but honestly, I feel like. They're going to do what they did with other tournaments like two weeks before, a week before. They're going to be like, hey, it's canceled or it's pushed back another month. And then, you know. The, John, you should pull up the roster for the uh, U.S. team and talk a little bit about that, too, because I know we were talking about that before. Yeah, let me just share a screen again. Oh, also, uh, my take on Teddy is completely different from yours. I think he's going to pull a Ronda Rousey and quit judo and then go to MMA, fight a little bit, and then join the WWE. MMA, he's not going to do MMA. He's not going to do MMA. That no. was the most ridiculous. I, I think he, like, he, he, he made the money. He's good. You know? MMA is a quick, like, quick way to make money for good. Yeah. And also, like, you know, Ron, like, Ronda quit judo. She was still... Like, the reason, like, Teddy's, like, being de- on the decline is that his athletic ability has been declining and his willpower has seemed to be declining. And especially with the pandemic, I imagine that really affected him. Because I, I think he was really, like, the way I saw him in Dusseldorf, I, like, I was like, yeah, this guy's going to, like, destroy the Olympics. I have this theory. Just listen to this. I think Teddy's, like, lost and all of this, he's going to make a sick documentary about his journey to 2020. Watch. I have, like, mark my words. He's going to win the Olympics, and then he's going to make a documentary. Like, yeah, after, like, 2016, I lost motivation, blah, blah, blah. And I had to, like, push myself. Yeah. It's a good story. And I'd be a WMA, WMA, I'd watch it. They did, um, they actually, the Olympic Channel did um, an article on him where he talks about, you know, some of the hardships he's had where he, saying that he really likes candy and he likes his sweets, like sugar a lot. <laughs> and that's why he's gained so much weight. <laughs> yeah, but he's had a child as well. So. Yeah. He's and, oh, yeah. So here's um, – uh, let's look at under hundreds for you. Um, you're, not, you're not entered. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm in third. Sorry. Come on. Hey. So you got Lippo. Have you had a match with Lippo? I fought him in camp, in Paris camp. This boy is heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never fought him. I'd, I'd love to fight him in competition. Yeah. I've only done randori of him yeah. a couple times, and it's usually pretty funny because when I, when I did randori of him in Cast of the Fells, like, I would be grabbing his um, the back of his arm, and because his arms are just so huge, I'd kept grabbing his skin, yeah. and he just got so annoyed at that. He's just like, one, he's just a mate. No. <laughs> and then like at the end of the round door, they called Mate for the for the round. And then he just swung in for the Uchimata and just slammed me. Yes. I was just like, what? 
And then like, <laughs> later in the camp, just like, I'd be standing on the side, uh, like a round would be going and he'd just come to me halfway through and just like, all right, let's go. No. And I'm just like, this is, That's I mean, not I'm, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm honored. And like the Randor is very good and our styles conflicted a lot because I'm like an extreme left-hander and he's an yeah. extreme right-hander. So it was, it was tough for, and I obviously didn't want to just overpower me. I'd pay to watch that. Yeah. But then Fonseca, you you can beat Fonseca pretty easily. Last time I've seen you. He's a world champ now, though. He's a world champ now, yeah. He, champ. He, had a day, he had a day of his life there. but he had a perfect day. I'm happy for him. Man. Yeah, no, he deserved it. But then you got Gazimov. Kotsoyev. Have you had matches with Kotsoyev? Yeah, I fought him in Hot Hot. I beat him, but it was like really close because me and him basically had the same style, except he's le- righty, I'm lefty. It's literally yeah. identical. Basically. Yeah, you both have uh, broad shoulders and you come over and throw your hips in. Pretty much. I had a match with him, uh, Cadet Europeans. Uh, I lost him on a penalty. I was oh, extremely wow. unhappy. <laughs> I was extremely unhappy. I felt like I, I I should have won that match, but again, you can't just let the you can't let the referees decide. He's a monster. Like he, I saw him when he did teams plus, he killed like a lot of really good plus, and I'm like, damn. I think uh, he told me that he is thinking of going to plus. Oh, like he Pro- w- he was thinking about it, <laughs> but I think right he probably thinks he can overtake Gazimov now. They're really wow. close, right? Eight and eleventh. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Kotsoyev move up because I think he'd do re- cause it, because of how broad his shoulders are. I think he can yeah. run on the but way. He wouldn't ball. do this. He wouldn't do the cycle. It's too late now. I think, but next cycle. Yeah, for the next cycle. And you got Kurumov, Idir, and Darwish. Darwish. Darwish, your rival from Egypt. <laughs> That's my homie, man. La. Yeah, Nikiforov no. was back. Uh, Nikiforov. He had really bad injuries. Like I hope he comes yeah. back, and stays healthy. Yeah, he's a fellow compatriot from Bulgaria. <laughs> Except he actually speaks Bulgarian, so he's a. Uh... <laughs> um, this is um like this is a pretty solid draw. Cave. Um, yeah. I think that'd be fun. That'd be a fun. Yeah, time. it looks like a pretty solid tournament. But that guy's name cream? Say that again. That guy's name Coffee Cream. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee Cream. Yeah, I love that guy. He's such a nice guy. Oh man. Yeah. But look at look at nineties. The top eight seeds from eleventh to first <laughs> in the world. World champ, world champ. Literally, world champ, world champ, world champ, top three. So, uh, silver in the Elam. Silver at the worlds. Yeah. Uh. Silver tough, tough on the world, didn't he? No, he got silver. Yeah, I just beat silver. Him. Medyev. Monster. 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 Um, Clerget. Clerget, another monster. I th- Hatem is very underrated. He's really, really, really good. Hatem? Yeah, he's very underrated. He was. He, uh, like, didn't he got fifth? He got fifth at Masters at one point, I think. Yeah, but he like. I think he like. He makes stupid mistakes like. At the end of the fight, and that's how he loses. But like he's yeah. such a technical, smart fighter. Like watch, watch his fight with uh, Halmorzaev. He foot swept him like beautifully. Yeah, and he's been on the circuit for a while now, so he's Colton. extremely experienced. Um, Colton, Zach, Florentino's another tough guy. Clamor. This guy's pretty good. <laughs> Who's yeah. that guy? I actually didn't. I actually didn't sign up for this tournament. I was just they just entered me. Yeah. Um, and I'm not really planning to go. It's a few weeks away now. But hey, yeah. my brother. Yep. Oh, Bobunov is that ranked that low? Um, he's. Bobunov. Yeah, I know, I know, but this isn't in. Uh, this isn't the. Uh, no, that's not what I know. I know, just the seating, and then. Yeah, yeah he's then. not in the seating. Let's. Where is he ranked actually? Um, oh, he's on, he's my age. So he's ranked seventeenth. Okay. Yeah, he um he hasn't ha- he, like he only recently started getting big results. Yeah. Um, but we can look at eighty one. 
Ooh. That's a tough draw. That's a tough one too. Like it's, I mean, this is a grand slam, but I mean, that's a. I think it's like set up to be one of the hardest grand slams. Hundred percent, because everybody's so pumped to come back, and like a lot. Of, that's the thing I'm curious to see, because a lot of countries didn't get to train. Other countries were like Corona, who COVID, what, and they've been training since, you know. So, I mean, yeah, the. Like, do you think there's going to be, like, a noticeable difference between the countries that? I think so. Hopefully, like, from Canada, we've been, like, I don't I don't know compared to other countries, but, like, we've been training a decent amount recently. But, like, we took a long break, too, during, like, it's, yeah, it got bad here. Like, in the States, I don't know how, what, like, like, it's pretty bad there. So I think... From what I can tell, at least a group in Miami, uh, Kiyotsu side, they pretty much trained right through it. Yeah. Um, Texas, I think your do the dojos in Texas locked down for a bit, but now they're here and there. I see Nick Del Popolis, uh still training. Yeah. I'll, I'll see. Yeah, but I feel like a lot of people are gonna like come out of like all of this monsters, and some are gonna like crash, and you'd be like have to like rebuild. Yeah, like I'm. Hopefully, hopefully come out monsters. I think I think you've had like enough. Like you had a good break that you needed. Yeah. And then you've like been able to build back into training. Like for me, like I can't expect a whole lot coming back. Like, um. Well, expect like a lot of strength. You've been lifting heavy ass. Yeah. Weight. Like I need to like transition my strength into becoming more a little more athletic now and a little better cardio. But like I haven't done judo for a good six months now. Wow. At yeah. all. Like, well, just I've, all. like I haven't stepped on a mat. That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm gonna have like a real like a real tough time like getting back with timing and stuff, I think. Yeah. Like the first week you're gonna feel like absolute crap. Yeah, there's gonna be like very it's gonna be very rusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh good luck, my friends. Yeah. But I mean uh so Shadi, you're obviously planning to go to Pan Am's. Well, it got canceled in Montreal. Now they're yeah, make it they're, they're, they're holding it now in Mexico and Guadalajara. I'm scared of that because I don't know. Like, I don't know if there were restrictions or not, but if it's Olympic points, I think we're going to have to go. Yeah. But the rules are you can't leave the hotel, so that's kind of, like, reassuring a little bit. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, what they're planning is to hold it on a five-star resort. Oh, um, okay, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they're trying to hold it on a five-star resort. Um, with a, like have a bubble like the questions I'd probably want to ask is like are the workers also like in the bubble yeah that's like a key hey hey let's go boys <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so it's like a full resort like um like they have usually in Mexico and yeah and they're trying to like from what I from what I've heard they're like pretty gun how about trying to make sure it happens but everything is so vague right now with everything it's like once I see, like, dates, plans, everything, I'll be like, okay, I'm ready to go. Until then, I'm just going to train, watch Netflix, and mind my own business. Well, you know, they've they've come out with the pack, like, um, for Budapest, they haven't even come out with the, um, like, the packet yeah. of information. So big. And I hate, I hate, like, I'm not a last-minute type of person. I want to know what I'm, especially if I'm traveling. I don't want to know, like, yeah. and you oh, have to cancel it. Or like it. Yeah. 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 For Tbilisi, they told me a week before I left. They're like, oh, by the way, it's canceled. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, but for Pan Ams, they released the, um, the packet and everything. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see it. Um, yeah, it's November 18th to 22nd, I think. And they're holding the juniors and the, like, pan and the seniors in, in like one week. So they have juniors, the juniors leave, oh. and then the seniors come and we should have done it in Montreal, so I don't have to take a plane. I hate taking planes in. Yeah, that would have been a real home advantage for you. Yeah, we could have came, we could have chilled. Actually, no, Corona, never mind. Yeah. Everybody watching this. Well, like, if, before, like, everything happened, like, my original plan was to come uh, visit, you, visit you in uh, Montreal yeah. or Pan Ams and, like, after. Because the state, like, y'all would always come, to, like, well, you never did, but 
Like yeah, that's the plan I'm now. Here all the time, yeah. Yeah, like my plan was to come and train with you guys to lead up to Pan Ams because it'd be my first senior Pan Ams, so like I want to. Yeah. Like I, I want to like do well. Ninety, ninety is the worst. Oh, nineties is tough. You have the worst when it comes to Pan Ams. Yeah, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'd be seated. I'm not sure. No. Uh, you might, because it's what Silva, Mohab, Zach, Colton, uh, Mach- Machado, Masiro, yeah, uh, Yuta, uh, Florentino, you, yeah, yeah. It'd, it'd be like it depends who shows up. Yeah, we'll see. but it's a tough. Like it would be a tough group, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a tough tournament. Yeah. We'll see. I think for me, it's the 90s. Sorry, say that again? I think I'm moving up to 90s, man. I'm huge right now, yeah. and I don't think yeah. I can. Yeah, you look nice. Awesome, man. Look at them traps. Yeah, the traps are gone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like everything, man. Like, I don't think I could go back to 81, honestly. So, I mean, yeah, it's, I don't know. Cutting weight is another issue. Like, some people like focus so much on cutting weight that they forget that they have to actually do a tournament. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I know some people like it, it helps people focus for a tournament, but sometimes because uh, Shadi, you don't have to really cut weight at all. And I know no. it doesn't have to cut weight. I'm one one. Yeah. But like there's people cutting like seven to eight kilos and coming into a tournament. Like, yeah. And it kills you. Honestly, it's like, I don't think I'll ever cut, or I never cut a lot of weight. And I think the most was like three, four kilos. Four kilos was like once, and it was max. I don't know. I feel like I'd rather go in fully 100% than have to cut weight to have a slight advantage, which like won't really matter, you know? Yeah, and I'm also... It'll matter if it's like 14 kilos, but, you know, nobody like... Or 10 kilos, which like only a few do. Yeah. Insane, but... But, yeah, I think, yeah, I also had that same kind of mentality when I was in cadets and juniors because I'd fight under 90s in cadets at about 83 kilos. Yeah. And then uh, hundreds at the juniors and then a bit of seniors at about 92 kilos. I feel like 90, 100, and, like, even sometimes plus, it's like it doesn't really matter because they're going to be heavy no matter what, you know? I think it's in the lighter weights where, like, if you cut a lot of weight, it matters. Yeah, I think for 60s, is like, there's some people who, like, show up just huge, and it's definitely an advantage. Yeah. But although I think since I've, like, cut down to 90s, I've noticed, because I've had to deal with the strength at 100s, like, when I come up to us, like, one of the strong guys in 90s, it doesn't, yeah. like, it doesn't phase me the same way. Yeah. Like, 100s, you get, you get, like, some guys who are just literally immovable, unless you have the side like the weight to also pull them but that the majority i feel like like with 81 with jesse it's more like let's say it's finesse 90 is a mix of like finesse and like power 100 it's mostly power but there's a few like i don't use i use i don't use power because i'm not as powerful as the others so i have to be like fast and run around blah blah you know but mostly it's like 90 is like a mix of everything. 81 is more finesse, except like a few are ridiculously strong, like you, Jesse. Look at them traps, boy. <laughs> and yeah, 100 is like all power, most of the guys. Yeah, I don't like finesse. I don't like having, I just like pick you up and you know. Yeah, no, because in 81, you have like, I think in 81 and 73, that's where like most of the goals go. I don't like when I throw somebody. They do a cartwheel out of my throat, I, and so stupid. Like, let me, <laughs> and that doesn't happen when I fight heavier people, and that's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, just uh, w- watch, watching the like hundreds and nine. Well, nineties actually used to go weirdly athletic. Yeah, but, like watching hundreds try and spin out of throws is sometimes pretty funny. <laughs> hey, hey, I spun out once, and I was very proud of myself. And also, when when like hundreds spin out and they land. Like that, like that's a that's a lot of weight coming down onto the mat. Like that's but like Laporte Peter Palchuk, they're 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 athletic as hell. 
Like, oh, yeah. yeah, they can like backflips, like all of that good stuff. You know, it's like it's like a sixty kilo fighting basically. <laughs> like, like how can you do that and be so heavy? You know. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think it'd be interesting for the return, especially like the to bring it back to the start to see you know how Teddy comes back. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people are going to be interested. Hundred percent. Because, I mean, so, Shadi, you think he's going to come back stronger than ever? Teddy's going to come back a monster. Oh. I'm really unsure about it. Just I bet, I bet you two dollars. Two dollars? Canadian. Ah. <laughs> I'm out. How about, how about one one US dollar and one Canadian dollar? That's true. I've got a box of donuts I bought today. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely going 90, bro. <laughs> I mean, I think it'll be tough for Teddy to come back because uh, from being on the top of the world for so long, he's not used that's, to losing. But that's what makes a champ. Either he's going to like... You gotta come back from from a big L, you know. But you can't. Did, did in that match, did it look like he was coming back from a big L? Because his big L was a was to lose in Paris in the Bercy Arena. Yeah, but it's a process. Yeah. Like I, I didn't expect him, especially quarantine thing. I didn't expect him to just jump back into being a monster like in like a few months. You know, it's gonna be a process, but. What matters to him, he doesn't care. He, he literally won every tournament you can imagine. All he cares about is the games. So now, like, all of this, I, I don't think mentally he's like, like I just want to qualify and then I'll destroy everybody. Yeah. If we do teams, though, imagine, because Canada's going to do teams, I might have to fight him. I think you can I think you can edge him out, to be honest. I'll, I'll literally, like, my tactic would be run around, gas him out, and then, like... You, you watch how to, you just watch a uh, video of how to beat him. <laughs> I, I think yeah if you can uh because you got some pretty long arms i think yeah i think if you just edge him out and come out with he seems like if i don't know if y'all know teddy but he seems a little bit powerful you know if i stay like this i think he'll like, I like run in circles yeah run circles and haul them out yeah J- john you fight him and camp and let me know i don't know <laughs> i i crumble against power like that though <laughs> But I don't know. It'd be interesting to see the mindset of um. It's it's because of the documentary he's making. Trust me, he's gonna win the Olympics if there's an Olympics. Yeah, that's another problem. Yeah. Va- vaccines are gonna uh, come out over the next year and a half, like next year. IGF, give us a fight island, like in the UFC. I would love that because then we can all just go train and. We don't got the funds, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you just see um, Turkey uh, had an international training camp? Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. Like Israel and Belarus were there. Yeah. And they were all in a resort, so they're probably on a bubble. Yeah, it's, it's you just hold Fight crazy. Island and... Uh... They got tested and stuff. I saw on like Peter Patrick's story, they get tested occasionally and stuff, so it's good. So, but that's the thing. It's like 600 athletes competing you know that's a lot of uh like, well, testing yeah, that's a lot of swabs and stuff and testing and because i heard they were they're gonna clean i don't know if they did it already or they did it's like every four or five fights they clean the whole mat I'm like that's crazy because like that means i'm gonna have to go home at 1 a.m after the tournament is done you know yeah and also i don't know if the cleaning the mat's gonna make the mat a little slippery yeah until it dries or something foot sweeps could be, could be the thing for twenty twenty one. Maybe that's how Teddy lost. He like slipped or something. He fell over once. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I think I I feel like he deserved to lose that match. To be honest, I think if like there's he didn't get the, that Cheeto, he would have won that fight. Yeah, but I think. Like, like, congrats for Joseph and all, but I don't yeah. know. I feel like Teddy, if, like, because Teddy had a good grip and he got a shield for it at the end. I feel like 30 more seconds and he would have thrown him. It was sort of one of those matches where, um, like, one guy didn't win the match, but the other guy kind of lost the match. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that was deep. Because I, I've had a lot of, ma- I've had a, like, I think in Australia, I had a match um, with uh, one of the Israelis 
and I lost out on penalties and after match I just kind of realized like I just yeah. lost like that was myself like I, think, I was just waiting for me to lose like I think those that, like I I was in Morocco I lost the fight like that I literally made myself lose and like that kind of like wakes you up you're like what the hell did I just do like what's the point of me being there and then like either you're gonna be like okay it's not for me or you're gonna be so pumped to like do good you know I think I'm hoping that like Ted that's gonna like be the wake up call for Teddy because in Paris the way he lost like he he got thrown yeah and, and it wasn't like because he he's always been a sort like in the last year and a half year two years he's been sort of a bit of a lazy fighter but I'm hoping like now that he's lost on penalties because of his like inactivity I'm hoping that's gonna be the wake up call to see like because when he was at his like on form like he was really exciting to watch Teddy's gonna come back a beast I'm calling yeah I mean he's got a strong team although I mean I I don't know how much his his uh, coach pushes him because I they sort of just seem to joke around too a little too much for my liking but that's also yeah but that's that's what he shows uh, us right we never know what he's really doing but we'll see that's 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 the fun part is like well we'll be we'll be there to watch it hopefully but Anyway, I think so. That, I think that's going to be it for today. I anyway, thank you guys for uh, listening or watching. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jesse. You keep saying this is not a podcast. So what is it? It's a talk. It's a talk show. Talk show. Okay. Just trying that's to clarify because I, I see. I, I know a lot of people are calling this a podcast, so I'm just trying to clear the air. <laughs> a talk show that can be found on. Now, now SoundCloud and possibly other podcast platforms in the future. <laughs> All right. See you guys.